will be going live here shortly. They have started qualifying for the short track division tonight at USA International. So while they're qualifying, we're going to get ready and we'll be going to the race very shortly. As we're watching qualifying here, you notice the SK mods are going to be at the front yet again tonight. The super late models definitely have the pull on the straightaway, but the SK mods just have so much momentum through the corners, so much more grip, although it might get a little tricky here and there. Sorry, we were working through some little bit of a technical question there. All right, so as they're finishing up qualifying, trying to see how much they've got left, they do run a 10-minute qualifying session, but we'll just go over some quick notes tonight. This is a split decision short track division. Friday nights we run the uh, big group this week we'll be at Atlanta with the NASCAR Cup, Xfinity, and Trucks on track together, just like the SKs and the Super Late models are on track together tonight. Now, these guys will be going 100 laps. Both cars can run on the, can make it to the end on the fuel they're on. However, the Super Late models definitely do not want to go the distance on tires. And the SK mod said if they get over about 50 laps of green lap running, well, they're going to want some tires too. They can make it to the end. We've had drivers go a full 100 laps on the same set of tires, but they don't necessarily enjoy it. Uh, one thing we noticed in practice tonight, if you... The super late models can get down onto the apron going through the turn, and it can actually help them rotate, especially coming off the turn if they're getting tight. However, if the SK mods get down there and even get just one tire down just a little bit on that apron, it can send them for a ride to the outside wall. It does get a little bit tricky, and when these two get going side by side, it will be exciting. They will have one fast repair. They do have unlimited tires and fuel, although they really will only need the tires. Uh... The SK mods were running let's just take a quick gander at the lap times here and see but I do believe the SK mods are still running about eight tenths of a second faster than the super late models one of the biggest disparities we've had in this series so far which does make it exciting because that means that the uh, SKs this time around we'll be lapping the super late models. We've had instances recently where the super late models are doing the lap lapping, but the uh, it's going to be a different race tonight. Quite a bit different. They do have a <clears throat> incident limit. 18x drive through and 22x as a disqualification. So they will have to be a little bit on the careful side. Looks like our lineup tonight in SK Mods is going to be Lucas Gortman, Andy Turner, Nate Johnson, Jim Coleman'sberger, Jacob Hirsch, Bill Bussey Jr., and Brendan Whitford. Brendan is actually sitting all the way back in 
13th looked like he might have had some problem on this qualifying run because he's stuck back in the middle of the super late model. So that will definitely make for some entertaining racing as he starts to come back up through the field. Uh, in the super late models, we have Chase Berry, Tyler the Turtle Rush, Stephen Fish, Kevin Bernheimer, Austin Householder, Dave Gilbert, our winner last week, and our fearless leader, and Binks Albert. Looks like for the most part, everybody qualified pretty close together on times. Looks like there was a few instances here. It looks like Binks and Brendan both had problems on their qualifying laps. However, we know from past experience, both of these guys will drive to the front given the opportunity. All they need is a little bit of clear track, and they'll make it to the front. We have three minutes left in qualifying. Qualifying session is a little bit longer in this league. We do the same on Friday nights. Gives everybody a chance to refill their drink, stretch their legs before they go racing. And we are going to see some exciting racing here. We tested here. Uh, back when we were still trying to use the Cadillac CTSV, this was one of the first tracks we tested at with the combination of the three. And while the Cadillac was actually quite good on track with both of them, it was a road car and did not take a beating very well. If you messed up and hit the wall, it was pretty well totaled. They only have one fast repair and the Cadillac needed a bit more than that. So stuck with a couple of oval cars and here we are been asked a few times why do the split decisions run the way it does with Friday nights having cups truck and Xfinity on track together and then Monday nights having the SKs and the super late models and it really comes down to one word fun it is really fun when you get on some of these tracks some of them you get uh, you get spread out you don't see each other but you then you end up lapping one car or another and then there's some of these tracks where you know the cars are fairly equal due to the size and the layout of the track and guess what you are side by side with another type of car you got to adjust to their driving they have to adjust to yours and it just makes it a lot of fun you learn a lot about the people that drive with you race with you and uh, how you can race in that traffic and it does get exciting I imagine we will see some lapping and hopefully we won't see a whole lot of cautions tonight although if we do I think we'll see him coming off of turn four uh, turns one and two everybody tends to play a little bit nice from what we were seeing in practice but once you get down to the other end of the track for whatever reason I think there might be uh, some red in that paint and these guys just see red and take off now we are at USA International that was uh, is actually Lakeland International Speedway does not exist any longer as I recall however we're fortunate like North Wilkesboro that this track has been saved by uh, iRacing. Sorry, my brain stopped. So we'll go into the details on Lakeland here in just a bit. As we are looking at about 10 seconds before they start lining up, and we get the green flag for a hundred laps of racing tonight. My throat is a little sore. I probably won't be getting quite as loud as I normally do, but temperature dropped here quite suddenly today, so just kind of gave me a bit of a shock. As we see the pace car is finally out there. Take a look at some of these cars now. Several of these cars are painted by, if you'll notice in the lower right hand corner of your screen, Turtle Shells. Turtle Shells run by Tyler the Turtle Rush and John Nichols, two members of Split Decisions. As we see the Split Decisions number seven of our fearless leader, Dave Gilbert. And we'll scooch on up here and find Mr. Tyler the Turtle in that 27 car. Both of those are turtle shell paint jobs we work our way to the front take a look at Lucas Gortman and Andy Turner on the outside in the front row the 
Then we've got Nate Johnson and James Col Jim Coleman'sberger, Bill Bussey Jr. and Jacob Hirsch, and of course Chase Berry and Tyler the Turtle Rush. It looks like Chase might be blinking just a bit. And we go back to Stephen Fish and Kevin Bernheimer, Austin Householder, and Dave Gilbert. Binks Albert, Chris Perry, and Vincent Tabes back there. Work our way back up to the front and wait for these guys to start pacing around and get the one lap to green, and we can get going. Lakeland looks like they closed their doors in about 2008 and no longer in existence. It's been demolished and being used as a warehouse. Looks like uh, 2010 it was torn down, but thankfully iRacing was around then and managed to save the track. It's a three-quarter mile concrete paved oval with 14 degree bank turns at both ends. And here we go. As they get one to green, we will follow Mr. Gortman around. And that Taco Lover number 17 car. Get a little bit closer as we come around. The pace car should be dropping off. The lights are off. They will go on the green flag this time, and then after that, any caution, any restart, it's on the leader to decide. Looks like they're doing another full lap before they go, so we'll talk about that real quick. They uh, restart. They start the race on the green flag, but any restart is at the leader's discretion once the pace car is on pit road. That means they can play a little strategy and... Maybe mess with somebody a little bit to get a little bit of a jump on the starts, or on the restarts. Try and get some sort of advantage. This Friday on PTM Racing TV, we will have the split decisions big, big league with the Cup Xfinity and Trucks. We'll be at Atlanta, and that will be uh, quite a race. We're running it in the morning time, too, just for... A uh, little bit of variety on the weather and the temperatures. So it'll be interesting as we watch them. And there's the green flag and the lights flicker in the stands. And Lucas Gortman leads him down as Tyler the Turtle Rush dives to the inside right off the bat. We'll probably see him stay too wide for a few minutes here. because Well, maybe not. Andy Turner already to the lead. Lucas Gortman falls in line back in second. Nate Johnson third. James Coleman'sberger in fourth. And these SKs are flying around the track. As we'll start working our way back to look at some of the super late model racing going on back here, we've got Chase Berry leading that division. Now they are racing only their own division, only their own car type, but it is fun to try and see if you can beat the other one. The uh, super late models definitely will, If you when you see them get by an SK mod, they will just drive away from them on the straightaway. But once they hit their brakes to go in the corner, the SK mods kind of don't. They just kind of go. Chase Berry's already breaking out with a 1.3 second lead over Tyler the Turtle Rush. Last week we saw Tyler on his turtle shell. So hopefully tonight we'll get a better finish out of Tyler. Won't end up on his lid. So we go to the 32, Stephen Fish. We've seen some great finishes out of him, including, if I remember correctly, a win at Nashville in his very first race in the league. So he puts on quite a show. As we already see the Country Time Lemonade, Vincent Tabe going to the outside, starting to work his way up through the super late models. And there you see the him coming off the corner. Now, as you watch, these super late models do get the run. 
But watch as Vincent just comes around and drives right up underneath. Careful coming up off that apron. As we talked about before the race, coming up off that apron is a little bit tricky for those SKs. That 79 Super Late model looked like he was going to try and get underneath Vincent, but thought better of it there for the moment. As they come out of turn four, and Vincent is already working his way back up. He's only got three more super late models to get past. And he's actually gaining time on the fifth place SK of Jacob Hirsch. He's gaining a little bit of time every lap. Oh, that was close. Vincent got really close to Turtle there. See if we can find last week's winner, Dave Gilbert. Dave kind of snuck up on it to get that win. There's Dave in the split decision super late model tonight, number seven. Dave kind of sneaks around for half the race, and then towards the end, he just comes to the front. He played a strategy game that worked out really, really well last week. As we see, it looks like Austin, sorry, Kevin Bernheimer closing in on Dave Gilbert there. And we see Brendan Whitford in that SK mod, the purple and orange. He's picking up positions, trying to get back up there and catch Vincent and Chase. I'm sorry, Vincent and Jacob. And they've got Chase Berry between them. They've got Tyler the Turtle Rush and Stephen Fish. So we'll get to see some racing because it looks like Stephen Fish is already looking to get around the turtle. But here comes that SK mod just powering around that corner. And they're finally starting to get settled in, spread out. Looks like we might get lucky and have a long green flag run. I wish I hadn't said that. That's always bad luck thing to say. As we go back up here to Chase Berry leading the super late models. That is a new paint scheme for uh, Chase, I do believe. Very bright under the lights, that is for sure. And Vincent Tebe has already worked his way back up. He is back he is clear of all the super late models and now he's going to be working his way up to catch Jacob Hirsch, Nate Johnson and James Colmansberger. So we look at the 54 we just saw Binks Albert on pit road looks like he's had an incident and hit the wall at some point looks like he's pancaked the right side just a, just a little bit there And we'll work our way around the track and go back towards the front of the field. As we see James Hirsch and Nate Johnson battling for the fourth position for the SKs. And they are starting to lap the super late models. So now it is going to get interesting as Stephen Fish is trying to work his way around Austin Householder. Now they have to contend with the SKs coming around. And here in about another 5-10 laps, you're going to start seeing these super late models are really going to be struggling coming up off those corners, getting down into the corners. Those SK mods, they don't struggle as much. Definitely got to see a lot of disparity in the corners during practice, especially when you're trying to battle side by side like Stephen Fish looking to the inside. Can't get it, and we've got the SKs to the outside. They're going to hold those super late models low. Oh, almost got... Almost got caught up back there. 19 of Bill Bussey Jr. got caught behind the super late models trying to get his work his way back up to the front. Oh, Bill gets caught again. 
fortunately got on the straightaway and those super late models will get away so he doesn't have to worry too much about running into him just got to be a little careful there bill keep moving forward buddy as we watch austin householder coming around and it looks like bill's going to make a pass on him to the outside and make his way up here trying to catch tyler the turtle rush he is in second place in the super late models right now There's Jacob Hirsch trying to chase down James, Jim Coleman's burger. And we find Brendan Whitford chasing down James. And there is Nate Johnson, that red, white, and blue SK mod. He is currently running in third place. And he'll be running that uh, same paint job on his Whalen car tomorrow night and the gas and go league she'll be streaming from my seat right here tomorrow but next time I'll be behind the wheel and we've got a three car battle going on up here at the front Vincent Tabe up there with Lucas Gorman and Andy Turner looks like Vincent might be a lap down at this point yes he is and Lucas Gortman is making the move, trying to take first back. Remember, he started in first, but Andy managed to get around him on the start. After the first lap, Andy was leading. Andy is not giving up that position easily. Guys, you got 75 laps to go. Take it easy, boys. As we see the SKs battling for first, and here they come up on the super late model of Dave Gilbert. Dave is running in sixth in the super late models right now, but do not count Dave out ever. Watch these two battle for a couple laps as they start to battle around more and more super late models that are just ahead of them. There's three truck, three cars ahead of them. They've got the Kevin Bernheimer number 28 up there, and we've got a caution. See if we can figure out who was involved and maybe go to replay. And it looks like that number 60 truck, or I'm sorry, number 60 car. As we watch him come into the corner, Vincent Tabe was right in front of him. Let's see what happens when they come out of turn two gets sideways and smacks the inside wall and it looks like he is going to use his one fast repair for tonight As we go back up to the front, we see Lucas Gordman. The SKs are staying out. But I'm betting we're going to start seeing, yeah, the number five is in. Turtle is in. All the super late models looks like they are coming in to get four fresh tires. And about time, probably just about perfect for those guys at 30 laps. You know, some of these SKs said after about 40, 50 laps on these tires, they could... Uh, they would be wanting some new tires, at least right side tires. And was that Bill Bussey Jr.? Looked like he might have tagged the wall just a little bit. Looks like Bill is okay. Not sure what happened there, but he went up and got the wall. Doesn't look like he has any real damage. As they come around, they can start lap 31. And I'm curious, we're going to see a uh, restart with everybody kind of bunched back up by their division, more than likely, since all the super late models went in for a uh, fresh set of tires. So this will play out a little bit differently this time. Those SKs will not have to deal with the super late models very much. 
Might have one or two back there. And I am surprised that we didn't see any SKs go down for to get their one pit stop. That said, if they do any, that was all they need. However, last week, I believe it was Andy Turner might have gone the dist. One of the drivers last week went the distance on a single set of tires. We were talking about it before the race. He said, yeah, definitely could do it here since... Uh, he was able to do it last last week at North Wilkesboro. He could definitely go the distance here if he wanted to. They can all make it on fuel, but those super late models, they're all going to want tires probably one more time in about another 30, 40 laps. Lights are out on the pace cars. They go down the back straightaway, going through three and four. Pace car will drop off, and Lucas Gortman will control the restart this time. Lucas does tend to wait and go closer to the green, but he doesn't this time. Looks like he got out like shot out like a bullet. Goes down into turn one, holding the lead. Looks like we did have a couple of super late models mixed up in there. Getting a little dicey back there. As we see the top three settle in and start to give a breakaway. From Lucas Gortman back to James Coleman'sberger, just two spots is already over a second. When they crossed the start finish line, they were showing it over a second apart. Back to Jacob Hirsch is one and a half, one and so they are already lining up, not battling, and put. And Lucas Gortman's already starting to break away and give himself a lead. We watch the number 11, James Coleman'sberger, come around, coming out of turn four. He goes down the front straightaway. Work our way back and watch some of these super late model guys run for a minute. As Chase Berry again on this restart just takes off. But there's Austin Householder right behind him, and we've seen Austin on fresh tires. He is tough to beat. And Tyler the Turtle Rush is back there running third in the super late models. But they already have Vincent Tebe, I believe that is, back there in the SK Pink Country Time Pink Lemonade SK Mod. Oh, Tyler the Turtle Rush gets loose and backs into the wall. Caution is out, lap 38. Now, this is right at the point where some of these SK guys said they could stop and go the distance and they would be perfectly happy with what they were running so we're gonna watch Lucas here and see if he goes gets his one pit stop in now one car will get waved around for oh Lucas stays out Andy stays out James Jacob both come down pit road. Vincent Tebe stands at, stays out. Looks like we've only got two SKs on pit road currently. They will wave around one car per division based on where they are. So if the SK mod... The first car one lap down from the lead SK mod will get a lap back, and the first car one lap down from the super late model leader will get a lap back. A bit confusing, especially when you're in the middle of adminning a race with three types like we do on Friday. It gets a little tricky at times to figure out who's where and what and make sure everybody gets taken care of. As we see a couple of Cars getting those wave arounds now, and with those two, as Dave Gilbert and Tyler Rush are both on pit road, and they're super late models, and this might be some of Dave's tire strategy. He pitted off sequence last week, and that's how he got way back up to the front towards the end of the race, so we'll see if he can pull that off again. As one of our loyal followers, Bill Percy, would say, never count Dave Gilbert out. 
big shout out to Bill. He's a truck driver out on the road and stops sometimes just to watch the races. Or plans his stop accordingly so he can watch. So we see, looks like Chase Berry and Austin Householder are one and two in the super late models. And we see the SK mods moving around. And the super late model starting to stack back up side by side. Looks like by virtue of where they were position wise overall, they're lining right back up. So we've got all the SKs together again and all the super late models together again. Looks like there might be a couple of SKs way back there in the back, Bill Bussey Jr. And we're definitely not counting Bill out yet either. Bill has the uncanny ability to be there at the end as well. As the lights go out on the pace car, they go through one and two. We're going to stack them back up and get ready to go green flag racing. Most drivers are used to, most oval drivers are used to this track. This is one of the uh, rookie tracks start out in the street stocks here so everybody's used to seeing this but when you get in these different cars in, on this track it can be a whole different animal as they come out of turn three and four Lucas Gorman will hold the and he takes a restart right at the line they are green flag racing Lucas gets another good jump gets back into the lead We see a bit of a battle going on back here. Oh, my. They went four wide coming out of two in the super late model. And here we go again. They are thought better of it. Backed out. A couple of these guys calmed down just a little bit. But they are stacked up. Those SK mods are wanting to get by bad. But these boys are getting, getting gone. Tyler washes up a little bit. He's trying to make up after that accident. Backing it into the wall. He's going to try and get back to the front. Dives down to the inside and turn three and four and takes second place. Now he's going to chase down Chase Berry as he slides up in front of the SK mod. <laughs> We're going through one and two, and maybe they're going to calm down a little bit here. Maybe. Turtle moves over and lets the SK mod go by, I do believe. That's the number 60 of Nate Johnson, the red, white, and blue 60 SK mod. As he starts to take chase down Chase Berry and they just go to the outside monster on by him that super late model gets that little bit of a gap going down the straightaway but Chase is just going to go flying by on the outside again usually takes about a lap but there you see the SK can get around the super late model and just take off we actually tested with the Wayland mods as well, but they were so much faster. They monstered everything, everywhere. They were faster on the straightaway. They were faster in the corner. And it was almost comical how much faster they were than these other two cars. As we see Austin Householder and Bill Bussey Jr. racing side by side, Bill's going to get a good run on the high side coming out of two. He's going to try and chase down. Like I said, we don't count Bill Bussey out ever. Bill's one of those drivers, regardless of what happens, he sticks it out. He comes back, and he has had some great comebacks over the last couple of se uh, seasons in every league he's been in. As we jump back up here to Nate Johnson, he is running sixth in the SKs currently. Vincent Tebe is fifth. There's your third and fourth place. Jim Coleman'sberger in the 11. Brendan Whitford in the 131. As they come out of turn two, oh, looks like. Uh, Looks like James is starting to look to the inside. Is he going to... Going through three and four, he backs off a little bit. Looks like he's trying to build up a bit of a run. And looks like he might have a run down into turns one and two. He gets to the inside. 
And he's under him going down the back straight away. Will he be able to get it in turn three and four? No, Brendan comes down, blocks the run. And we go up here to the lead SK Mods. That's the number 35, Andy Turner, being led around by Lucas Gortman. They currently have three seconds on the third and fourth place cars. As we're just past halfway to go. And you know these two cars are continuing to build a lead every single straight away every single corner they still continue to build a lead on the cars behind them they want this thing to stay green like i said they can go the distance on fuel they can go the distance on tires they may not want to but they can and we're about to see lucas come into some lap traffic as lucas closes up on stephen fish dave gilbert and kevin bernheimer this will get interesting as these five cars start to work around each other trying to make passes. Kevin Bernheimer dives to the low line. Lucas jumps. Oh, Davis. And caution is out. Looks like Brendan Whitford has spun on the front straightaway. Let's see if we can go to a replay and figure out what's going on. As we watch the replay, Kevin goes through turns one and two perfectly clean. He's got the, or I'm sorry, Brendan goes through one and two perfectly fine. It's like comes out three and four, gets a little tight and just hits the wall. And spins it on the front stretch and brings out the caution. As we are still under caution. Work our way up. And let's see if these front two gentlemen will go take tires and fuel. There is Lucas Gorman. Does not look like he has pitted. He has not. We see Bill Bussey getting a lap back. As we have some. As we have Norma cheering him on in the, in the chat Bill's not out of this yet Norma as they come out of turn two they should be getting the one to go next time it does not look like Lucas or Andy is going to stop Again, I believe it was Andy last week. Went a full 100 laps at uh, North Wilkesboro. No pit stop. If he can do it there, they can definitely do it really easily here. Just going to have to take it a little easy on those tires and hope for another good long run. They can check out like they did previously. And Stephen Fish looks like he got waved around. He's going to get a lap back. watching the scoring to see as we see the SK mods are taking up the front six positions so on this next restart they will be side by side doesn't look like we'll have a lot of super late models mixed in there And we still have Chase Berry leading the Super Late Models, followed by Austin Householder, Tyler the Turtle Rush, Stephen Fish, Dave Gilbert, Kevin Bernheimer. Looks like Binks Albert and Jacob Hirsch are both out of the race as we get one to green.
As they come down the back straightaway, the pace car will duck off. We'll see if Lucas takes the jump again like he has been. He's been jumping about the time they hit that white line, so we'll see if he can do it again. See if he does it again, and we'll see if he takes off and gets another big lead. He does take the jump right at the white line, and they are going three wide. They backed out of it. They may not be backing out of it. Looks like they're going to try it. No, the number 60 backed out, but they are still two wide behind him. Lucas is loving this. Seeing this in his mirror, seeing him race side by side, that just lets him run away. As we see the 60 and Nate Johnson... And it looks like Andy Turner had a little problem there coming out of turn four. Got a little tight, ended up up by the wall, but he's coming back now. He's going to try and get past, but there's James Colmansberger. He's finally got up to second place. 37 laps to go. He's going to be going for it. And there comes the number 60 of Nate Johnson down to the inside with Vincent Tebe closing back up on him and Brendan Whitford back there as well. While Lucas Gortman's running away, the rest of these guys are back here still battling. And Tyler Rush got, finally got around the five car. Tyler Rush leads the super late models, followed by Chase Berry. And no surprise there, third place, Dave Gilbert, being followed by Kevin Bernheimer and Austin Householder. Oh! Dave gets, has a problem coming off turn two. Manages to hold on to position, but they are right up on him now. You can see those brake rotors glowing red. And he is pushing hard again. He's not going to slow down for anything. As Kevin runs right up behind him once again. Kevin's going to look to the inside. Will he get the run going into three and four? He does, and it opens the door. Austin Householder's looking to the inside as well, and we've got the 102. Vincent Tebe crashed on the inside of the front stretch. Let's see if we can find out what happened to Vincent. Give us just a moment. All right, here comes Vincent coming out of turn, going into one and two, coming down the back straightaway. Coming through three and four. Looks like, just as I mentioned in the pre-race, he got down there on the apron, and that is just death if you're in those SK mods. That is a struggle to survive. As we see Vincent on pit road now. Lucas Gortman is still out. And here's an interesting little piece of information. Jim Coleman'sberger. He got laps or I'm sorry, he got tires 32 laps ago, around lap 40, he got fresh tires. So he has the freshest tires there at the front of the pack. Nate Johnson back in fourth position. In the SKs, he had fresh tires on about 43 laps ago. And all these super late models are on 12 lap old tires or newer. Looks like we might have, nope, Stephen Fish is. And looks like most of the super late models are coming down pit road right now as Bill Bussey gets his last lap back. I do believe that's going to put Bill right back up there in the fight. Here we are at 30 to go. As we said earlier, Bill Bussey back in the fight. We've got super late models on pit road. We're about to have one heck of a battle. We've got a tire, different, all sorts of different tire strategy going on up at the front. These SK mods, they, they've got two different tire strategies going and we'll see which one pays off tonight. As we see Andy Turner managed to get his, after his little problem 
earlier in that run, he got back up into third place. Got around Nate Johnson, but don't count Nate out either. You saw him battling earlier. He's been up there towards the front battling with these leaders the whole race. And as we look back, we see Tyler the Turtle Rush is back, back leading. Chase Berry is the second super late model. Kevin Bernheimer is third. And now Bill Bussey Jr. is in sixth on the lead lap. But look what we have here. It's Dave Gilbert on fresh tires. Seems like a repeat of last week. Timing's about right. Yep, yeah, those three cars right there. Dave Gilbert, Stephen Fish, Austin Householder, all on fresh tires. 28 laps to go. They'll be going green with about 26 to go. Got three of the super late models on fresh tires, three of them on old tires. That will come into play before it's all said and done. You got James Coleman'sberger restarting on the outside. Lucas Gortman's on the, his original tires. James has 35 lap old tires. So there's some more tire strategy for you. Andy Turner back there is on his original tires as well. There's a, three different strategies it looks like on the tires here with the SKs. But most of those super late model guys as they pace car ducks off. And Lucas gets another good jump right at the line. And you see those super late models already getting dicey back there. They know that the three behind them, they have fresh tires. Those top three cars better get away quick. As we see Tyler Rush and Chase Berry, Tyler gets a run, but Chase is already down. Caught back up, and there is Dave Gilbert making a power move past the 28 and the 75. Coming through three and four. Already closing up on Chase Berry. Dave's still got those two cars behind him. They have fresh tires, but this is not over yet. We're coming to 25 laps to go. That was one of David, Dave's fastest laps. That was also one of Tyler's slowest laps that time. Dave was two tenths of a second faster that lap than both Tyler and Chase Berry. We see the lap times towards the front are all pretty even in the SK mods, but this battle is about to heat up as Dave Berry dives to the inside of Chase Berry going through three and four. Dave makes a stick. Will he get the run coming up off of four? He's got the momentum. He's going to go into one and two, take second place, drifts up just a little bit, cuts off Chase Berry's attempt to come back. They are battling back behind him, but right now it is all about that seven car trying to chase down Tyler Rush. This is the battle for the lead, folks, for the super late models. The SK mods, they have pretty much taken out the same way they restarted. You had Lucas Gorman first, Andy Turner second, James Coleman'sberger third, and we'll probably see him come lap these cars before long. Dave gets down on the apron, but gets back up, takes off. He's got Chase Barry to the inside. Dave looks like he is slipping. Oh, my, Vincent Tebe power move right up between the super late models coming off the corner. Dave's not quitting yet. He's already starting to look to get back by Chase Berry. Work our way back up here. There's that 131. Brendan Whitford, we saw him crash earlier. He is back up in fifth. Nate Johnson in fourth. Third place, James Coleman'sberger slipped back to third. Andy Turner managed to get back up to second place. But the man that is leading the entire field is Lucas Gortman. The number 17 Taco Lover SK mod is leading with just 18 laps to go. As we watch them come off of turn four, they, or turn two, excuse me, they are all lined up, single file, 
starting to put some distance between each other. The one thing Lucas does not want to see now, 17 laps to go, he does not want to see a caution and let any of these guys get back up to him. As Dave Gilbert's on pit, coming off pit road right now. Looks like Dave Gilbert had some problems, had to go to pit road, might have tore up those tires. As we see Austin Householder and Stephen Fish, Stephen Fish is looking to the inside. We know he can come on strong right at the end of the race, but Tyler Rush still there at the front, probably very happy that Dave had some problems there because he didn't look like he had a whole lot for him. Chase Berry still trying to find some way to get around that 27 car. Hasn't been able to do it yet. They are on the same tire strategy. 14 laps to go. Chase is driving it in there deep, trying to get something going. Comes up off the turn, looking to the outside, trying to get a run. Went from the outside to the inside. Gets inside a turtle. Hits him, straightens him back up. They all check up behind him. They're going through the grass. We've got two wrecking on the front straightaway. Caution is out. 13 to go. As Chase and, as we saw, Chase and Tyler got together, the whole field had to check up behind them. And here we are with 13 laps to go. I do not think we will see either of the front two cars of Lucas Gorman and Andy Turner. I don't think we'll see either of them on pit road. At this point, there's not a lot of reason to do so. However, we will see a massive shakeup of the super late models. Dave Gilbert is one lap down, but he should be able to get his lap back on this. Will that give him the chance? Tyler Rush and Chase Berry, first and second. Kevin Bernheimer and Stephen Fish managed to get through that mess clean. As we see Kevin Bernheimer getting a lap back. That'll make him the third super late model on the lead lap. Let's go look real quick because I think I just noticed something very interesting that we're going to see. Been talking about it off and on all night, but there is Bill Bussey in the number 19. He is sixth place in that SK mod. He is back on the lead lap after trouble early, and he is back up there with him. As we see Bill pace around, he is on 60 lap old tires, along with Nate Johnson. He is an easy, possibly a couple of positions he can pick up here with some of these older tires in front of him. And let's go see Dave Gilbert is coming off pit road now, along with the five of Chase Berry. Let's see where this all shakes out. With 10 laps to go, this is going to be interesting, but we saw a late restart last week. Dave Gilbert managed to capitalize on that. Can he do it again, or does anybody have anything for Tyler Rush? Chase Berry thinks he does, and Tyler Rush looks like he'll be lining up behind Chase this time. Looks like by virtue of these final pit stops, Yes, indeed, it looks like we're going to have a really interesting restart. As it looks like after pit stops, Chase Berry is in first for the super late models. Followed by Austin Householder and Tyler Rush. So we're going to have quite an interesting restart. We get one lap to green as they come out of turn two. Coming down the back straightaway. 
Dave and Bill have people cheering for them in the chat tonight. So hopefully these two guys can pull it off. As they drop off, will Lucas take the early jump? He does. This time, Andy was expecting the jump. Andy expected the jump, but he still didn't have anything for him going through one and two. Will he have something at three and four? I don't know. We've got another caution out. See if we can find where the caution is. Looks like Tyler Rush might have had some problems. Let's see if we can go to the replay. All right, well, let's watch this restart with Tyler. As a Went a little too far back there, my apologies. As the pace car comes off, it turns three and four, and Tyler Rush gets a heck of a jump and crashes into Kevin Bernheimer. He had a run, thought he was clear. Just bad timing. <laughs> Looks like Tyler stayed out. I don't believe he stopped and got repaired. No, he did. He pulled in, got his fast repair. And now he has four fresh tires. As we see the number seven of Dave Gilbert, he is currently showing one lap down to the Super Late Models in sixth place. The Super Late Models led by Chase, Chase Berry. The SK Mods are being led by Lucas Gortman tonight. And I do mean tonight. Lucas has been the class of the field so far tonight. And to Lucas's advantage, this will be a single file restart. They did not complete a lap under green. Therefore, they will go to a single file restart. iRacing automatically puts them on that. So this only helps Lucas. He doesn't have to worry about somebody on the outside when he restarts. He can use the whole track. He can control the start even more this time around. Lights should go out on the pace car. No, they do not. Four laps to go. They do have a couple of green-white checkers if it comes down to it, but with a single file restart, it's less likely. We'll probably see a lot more action back with the super late models, but we're going to watch these SKs at first and see what they've got. Bill Bussey has now moved up into sixth place. Vincent Tebe is back up on the lead lap in seventh. The top five in the SK, Lucas, Gortman, Andy Turner, James Colemansberger, Brendan Whitford had some problems earlier, back up in fourth, Nate Johnson in fifth. And then in the Super Late Models, you got Chase Berry, Austin Householder, Stephen Fish, Tyler Rush, and Kevin Bernheimer. Looks like Kevin might have pitted as well as Tyler. Yes, he did. So they're going to hope those fresh tires play an advantage as the lights are finally out on the pace car. We are one lap to green. And we will have about two laps once they restart. As long as Lucas takes the white flag, comes back around and picks up the white flag, the race will complete. If there is a caution before the white flag, they will get another chance at a green-white checker. Pace car is off. Lucas Gortman is in control of this race. He's dragging it a little bit. Now he's going. Tricked him up, took off early all night, and we see Tyler Rush diving to the inside. Lucas Gortman breaks away. He's got a lead, but Tyler Rush just power drove past Bill Bussey. He is trying to get back up there to Chase Berry. Kevin Bernheimer follows him through. As Chase Berry takes the one to go. 
Tyler, and we see the 60, Nate Johnson spinning, no caution. Looks like Lucas Gortman will win in the, in the uh, SKs, and Chase Berry uh, takes the checkered in the super late models. And we will get to watch Lucas come back around to the front straight away. We'll see Chase come join him momentarily. They will start spinning out, burning them tires up. And if you'll stay with us, I'm betting. I'm betting one of them might join us here in a minute as we see a little bit more craziness than usual tonight on the front stretch. Looks like some of them just went and wrecked their cars for the fun of it. And hopefully we'll get them in the broadcast booth as we see the two of them working together to get some burnouts in, get some donuts in, crashing into each other and just having a good time. Settle down there, boys. Your pit crews are not going to be happy with the damage you're doing to your cars. We'll see if we can get them to hop over here for just a moment and talk to us. Hey, Chase, good race, man. Chase, you got me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got you. That was a great race, man. Did you uh, think you'd be able to pull it off there at the end? Uh, no and yes. I mean, I felt like Turtle was burning his tires up really fast. So I was able to catch him after five or six laps, but on the short run, I just hopefully caught up to him and hope for the best. But if I got into him, it's my fault, but I tried to save him, and I felt bad about it. <laughs> yeah, it looked like you actually were trying to straighten him back up. That was quite an impressive job. And uh, honestly, you guys didn't really cause the caution. Well, they stacked up behind you, and that brought out the caution. But you guys had some great battles tonight. Yeah, sure. I, wish it was, I, ain't gonna lie, I wish it was a lot further than what it was. Um, I would love for it to win green or a whole way. But, uh, yeah, it was, definitely made me sweat a lot, a lot. And Lucas Gortman. Did anybody have anything for you tonight? I mean, you just you took kind of took off at the beginning and just never looked back. Yeah, um, I mean, honestly, I wanted to take tires, but same with last week at North Wilkesboro, clean air was much more important than tires there. And once they cooled off, I ran some laps and I was like, oh yeah, these things are wonderful. Uh, Andy, he he almost had me on that second to last restart he really did he had a good jump and then the caution came out right away and i think that was really his best chance besides traffic if once we got into traffic there that's when uh he really could gain on me because i just could not get around traffic um when i hit that dirty air it just it got so tight and it was so hard to drive and he was able to kind of get through me he actually passed me once and you know but in the clean air just it, it was no no chance well, that was definitely a great show, guys, and, and you definitely controlled all the restarts and, and the pretty much the entire race there, Lucas, But uh, and some nice burnout celebration tonight, too, as well. Yeah, I'm starting to figure out how to get uh, do a burnout in these things. They're kind of hard to uh, do donuts because they don't have that much horsepower, but you know, I, I used the grass up a little bit and uh, was able to heat up the tires enough to get it to slide around. <laughs> yeah, it looked like you had a little help from Chase as well. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it almost seemed like it was a mix of a demolition derby and a uh, celebration. <laughs> it did look like a demolition derby, brief, derby briefly when Dave and a couple of other cars got to the front straight away and started banging into each other. But that great job tonight, guys. Great race. And uh, take it easy. We'll see you next Monday. All right, thank you. You guys take it easy. That was an awesome race and a great win uh, in the super late miles, Chase. Thank you, and you. I just wish I was in a modified so it would have been actually me going overall. <laughs> all right that was the split decisions racing league short track division monday nights turn in friday night to ptm racing tv to see the trucks xfinity and cup cars on track together at atlanta this week 
And until then, this is How to Suck at iRacing. Tune in. We have a podcast now. It was posted today. We've got uh, video, lots of videos coming in the next few days. Keep an eye out. Have a great night.